All right, so in this video, we're just gonna cover a few different types of aquarium gifts you can give someone either for Christmas or their birthday. And in this video, I wanna cover stuff that you might not normally think of or that other people aren't you know, talking about. I and mean, you can go out and buy a hundred different types of food, uh, you know, 20 different types of lights from eBay, you know, from Aquarium Co-op, Fluval, Fluvals 2.0. You can get all kinds of stuff that is out there and in the norm and probably in the person's you know who you're buying for it's probably in their line of sight they've probably seen this stuff and they probably know about it either they you know can't afford it or it's just not for them for whatever reason and by all means if they if they can't afford a fluval 2.0 or a planted stingray or a phoenix stingray and they want that get it for them they'll love you for it a nice slimline LED aquarium light is awesome to have on any aquarium. Um, if you're doing a planet tank, high power lights are amazing, especially when they're LED because they're easy to run. Uh, they're cheap and cost effective to run once you own them. The wattage is low um, and they just look good. So uh, by all means, if you can afford that and they can't do that, that they'll love you. But um, if you want something that's a little bit more cost effective on the cheaper side and unique, um, as you saw in the thumbnail, this video will kind of cater to those looking for something that's within the $20 price range um, that's going to give you, you know, something that they may not have or, you know, something new to try that is going to be very useful in their aquarium, around their aquarium and help them out. Now it's your job to pick what would be best for them depending on what their needs are uh, and what they're doing in the hobby. So anyways, we'll start grabbing some items and going over those. Um, I am doing water changes in the background, so I, I eventually we'll have to stop here and um, yeah, make sure tanks don't flood, but we have something for that and make sure tanks don't drain too far. So uh, the first thing we're gonna cover is just foods. Now, every aquarist has their you know, preferred food, whether it's Omega-1, New Life Spectrum, um, uh, North Fin, or Tetra, or Sierra, whatever it is. Um, it can be hard to pick a different food. Maybe they're very particular on their food. So giving an aquarist a new food is not always the best thing to do. They might have a certain food for a certain reason. Maybe their fish require a very specific diet. Uh, and you'll have to do a little bit of research uh, to ensure that you're giving them the right type of food. Their fish might be vegetarians, their fish might be carnivores, and there are foods specifically made for those. And most decent foods, or all foods really, will tell you what that food is aimed for and what type of fish, whether it's a cichlid, or an herbivore or an algae grazer, the food will tell you that. So the first thing I wanna start with um, is rapaches. Now, rapaches is a food that you're, um, the person you're you know, buying this gift for might have, but they also might not, and that's, that's the tank about the flood. All right, sorry for that. It's the holiday season. I have, uh, I have work to do. I'm also managing 60 tanks. Um, so yeah, when I make these videos, I I've got to take advantage of my free time. So, um, you know, if I'm making a video, I got to try and, you know, get some water changes done too. So uh, at least you kind of get, you know, uh, you get to know that the person who's telling you about these fish related products, that they're uh, uh, a giant fish nerd. So anyways, um, as I was saying, rapashi, um, it can be a great food. You want to make sure when you're buying foods that you buy the right kind for that person's fish. One of the best foods you can buy if you're not really sure is just the Rapashi Community Plus. Um, I'll, I'll leave links um, to a site that I recommend for some of these um, in, the, in, yeah, in the description. Um, but if you want to bypass those links, just check out Aquarium Co-op. That's where I got this Rapashi. And uh, yeah, they're a good business um, who will take care of you if anything happens to your order. Uh, and it generally doesn't. It generally arrives very, very fast. Um, so um, now this is Soylent Green. This is what I feed to my Plecos. There's also Super Green. You can also feed this. You see we've got a cichlid here. So for your vegetarian cichlids, uh, this is a great food to get them. Um, and then I also have Spawn and Grow. Now this I would not recommend Spawn and Grow for 
for most aquarists. This is getting fish to spawn and getting baby fish to grow. I use this because I'm a breeder. So I breed a lot of fish and this is, this is what I like to use to help give them the protein that they need. I'll also mix the two, so. Um, um, but these are great foods in the sense that most aquarists won't have them. It's a very, very good food. Breeders worldwide uh, really swear by this stuff. It's good, wholesome uh, food that is very healthy for fish. And it's, it's something different than what most aquarists are already feeding their fish. If you have an aquarist feeding dry food, this changes up the... Um, the the repetition of just feeding that flake every single day it gives them something that they can be more interactive with um you simply add boiling water uh it is three parts water to one part uh powder and uh this isn't open yet is it no that one's not open but three parts water to one part two to three parts water to one part powder and um uh, just mix it up and uh, it, it sets in about five to ten minutes and then it's good to feed for a few weeks. You can just take a little chunk out and uh, and feed it. And it's just something different that they might not have that is, you know, that might, you know, interest them. It might engage them more in their hobby, which is something really all Aquarius like to do. Um, next, what we have is um, another type of food. Now, this is a different... Again, it's, it's, this is like a, it's an O-nip tab. So what these are known for is being able to stick on the glass. So you can just smush this onto the glass of an aquarium and it gets all of your fish uh, who will eat it. And you've got rams, guppies, neons. So smaller community type fish, this is a great food to get them to come to the front of the aquarium so you can watch them feed. And this will feed them for you know up to a couple hours. Um, if you don't have a lot of fish, it'll give them something to graze on throughout the day. So it can also be just a really good food if you can't feed all the time because it slowly dissolves into the aquarium in little bits. Uh, if you have a tank full of small fish, it's a great food to feed them uh, slowly over a period of time and also um, to get those fish to come to the front of the tank so you can look at them um, and inspect their health and just you know see you know see your fish because that's that's why you have them um, so yeah and then one more type of food now this is not for everybody um, again no, these aren't of course all for everybody the Sierra Onip I would recommend to just about anybody depending on what type of fish you have um, but next are brine shrimp eggs. Now, these are specifically for people who are breeding fish or they want to give their small fish something that is very, very good. It's one step or maybe even two steps further than rapashi since uh, you have to get these guys to hatch. Now, these are from the San Francisco Bay uh, brine shrimp in the ocean. They harvest the eggs and to get them to hatch, you add some salt water to a... Uh, to a jar and then add aeration and they'll hatch in about 18 to 24 hours and uh, that'll give you you know some good live food it's another interactive way to feed your fish if you have you know your kids in the hobby and you want them to interact even more with the aquarium and learn some more about uh, nature and the way things work um, this could be a fun interactive way to feed their fish All right, and then next is one of these things that might not be out there forever. Uh, these are tetra test strips, six in one aquarium test strips. Now, this is 100, 100 six in one test strips. Now, I recommend that every aquarist has a liquid test kit because it's just, it's better, it's more accurate. Um, but, and that tank's about to overflow. All right, flooding averted. Um, so yeah, these might not be around all the time for the price that they're listed as, uh, as of now on Amazon. Um, so just to be clear, that's a hundred of them and I paid $20. Uh, now I do have Prime, so $20 free shipping to my door. Um, if you don't have Prime, I'm not sure if you'll even be able to buy them at this price. Now this is one of those things that Amazon made a mistake on. Uh, now don't go tell Amazon. Do not go tell Amazon they made a mistake. Uh, they do this with, with things. They've done it with freeze-dried um, freeze shrimp before and they marked down like a five ounce thing of freeze-dried shrimp for five dollars now it's up to ten where it should be 
Um, so yeah, this is cheap for the market. This is definitely cheap for the market. Um, you know, when you go to Petco, it costs $12 for 25 of these and I'm paying 20 for a hundred of them. This should be in the 30 to $40 range. Um, and if you want four of these, it costs like 300 something dollars, I think. It was like 200 maybe, it was a lot. So for these to be $20 is not something that will stay around. Uh, it's, you know, December, 2017. If you have an aquarium or you know somebody with an aquarium and they use these, uh, they will uh, be very appreciative to get a hundred of them now. Uh, the first one of these I actually got were bad. And uh, you gotta be careful, but you can return them. It's Amazon, it's not hard to, to make a return with Amazon, but these are good. Um, you, you need to be careful because you get, if you get them wet, they go bad. I mean, you get moisture in, they go bad, but they should have a desiccant in there to keep moisture out. And uh, yeah, just simple, basic stuff, but a very helpful item. And for $20, that's, that's a huge value uh, for a hundred of them. Normally 25 costs you 10 to 12. And uh, you've got four times that amount for, you know, twice the price. So that's, yeah, something I was very happy to find. Uh, then moving on, this is an infrared thermometer. Uh, this is my second one of these. I, I like to get backups um, in case I lose one. But uh, this was $20. They're normally $30. You might be able to find these on sale right now. I got this from, uh, I want to say, Home Depot. But uh, Home Depot and Lowe's may have these on sale right now. This is a good item that's a little bit different. If they have multiple tanks or they're doing water changes and they want to make sure that water is, that's going into the tank is the same that's already in the tank, the temperature, um, they can do that with this. So this is a very helpful item. Um, now there are TDS meters that, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest someone gets a TDS meter. Uh, if they're new into the hobby, but TDS meters are something you can also get for around ten dollars um, on Amazon and eBay. They're basically all the same quality at that price range. Uh, you kind of you get what you pay for um, with some of that stuff, but that's another option. A TDS meter, total dissolved solids meter, uh, not for beginners or novices. Really, you need to know your water chemistry to be playing with TDS meters. But uh, this is a good purchase for someone that really wants to, uh, you know, control the temperature of their tank. Um, and then right here, what we have are plant watering spikes. Um, this is another Amazon item and I'll put links in the description to these items. Um, if I can, uh, I, I should be able to get at least the Amazon stuff in the aquarium co-op stuff. But, uh, yeah, these are plant watering spikes, terracotta watering tubes. And uh, these are great for dwarf cichlids. They're great for plecos. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of different you know, types of fish will love you know, hiding in these. And um, if you're not an aquarist and you're looking at this, uh, this might not look like something you'd want to put in your tank. You might be scratching your head. But the thing about these is uh, they're a knockoff or a repurpose item for aquarists. Um, in the aquarium hobby, they make custom little terracotta caves that are not, you know, hexagonal like this um, uh, for plecos and dwarf cichlids. And they cost quite a bit. Uh, you're going to pay 10 to $20 for one little terracotta tube. Whereas these, I paid $9 for four of them. And I found three different sizes. This is your standard size. They have a smaller size and then a larger size. Uh, and I will link to that. That way you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, with these, you need to hunt around a little bit if you're not clicking on the links. I've always pay $10 for four of them. They go up to, I think, $24 on Amazon and $16.99 is what I see a lot of, but you also see them for $10 for four, which at $2.50 a piece, that's a pretty good deal uh, for someone with a lot of plecos. Uh, and I'll show you some of these in use right now. All right, so this is a 20 gallon long in my living room and we have some super red plecos in here and they're just grazing on some rapashi. And um, over here are my little caves that I've set up for the plecos. And I also have an albino crebensis in here, which is a small cichlid. Uh, I guess it could, be sitter, it could be considered a dwarf cichlid. But um, the crebensis, which is actually right there, 
also likes to hide in those tubes. So if you have someone with rams or a pistogramma, uh, any of the dwarf South American cichlids and even African, because this guy is African. Remember, he's from the, uh, the, Congo, uh, the Congo River. Um, it's a great hide for him. Any, any, any dwarf cichlid, really, that likes caves will enjoy these. Uh, and that's African, South American. Uh, cichlids like caves, remember that. And plecos do too. Um, so these could be a great addition to any pleco or uh, you know dwarf cichlid enthusiast. Um, so yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and mention here if we can get a good shot. Actually, I'm going to pick you guys up. So if you want to save even more money and you maybe want to make something for the Aquarius in your family or for yourself, I do have a video on it, but um, you, you don't need to watch the video. It, it shows you how to make them if you really want to watch it. Uh, Greg Jones also has a good video on it too. But um, what that is, is another little coconut hide cave. And for $2.50 roughly, you can go buy a coconut uh, and then cut it in half with a saw and then drill a hole in it or you know, kind of break a hole into it. Um, the fish really don't care about that. Um, you know how neat your hole is. But yep, that's just a, uh, a coconut cut in half. You take the coconut out. Uh, you can boil it to kind of maybe sterilize it um, and then give it to your aquarist or put it in your tank. And uh, that makes a great cheap little hide. Five dollars gets you two coconuts. And uh, here I've just put some, uh, some peacock moss on top of mine because I, I like the way it makes them look. Now, last but definitely not least is this little thing. Now, it kind of rubbed off, but I, I, I rightfully named this thing the Little Lucas 2.0 because uh, I got this idea from Lucas at LRB Aquatics. Um, he's a fellow fish YouTuber. And um, yeah, this was one of the links to his Amazon stuff that he uses and this is how he doesn't flood his tanks. Very, very helpful if you have a lot of aquariums. Uh, one of the most helpful things I've had, I have not flooded a tank since I've started using this. You do need to stay in the same room because of course it only makes, you know, so loud of a beep. But, um, and this, what this is, is for blind people. I will have a link. So what this is, is just, a, it's just a relay. Well, not a relay, but a circuit break. Um, so you, or well, the water, completes the circuit. And you can see that double beep means you got time. And I like it because double beep, solid, solid tone. And that, what that tells you is run. It tells you to run to your aquarium and unconnect that hose, quit filling your tank up. That tells you you got time. That tells you you don't. So uh, it's very, very helpful if you got a tank behind you, you're sitting on your couch, watching sports, watching a movie, doing whatever, on your computer, you can get your aquarium filled without having to sit there and watch 100 gallons just slowly fill up, or 50 gallons, or 40 gallons, uh, however big your tank is. You don't have to sit there and slowly watch it fill up. Now, this is not for everybody. If the aquarist you're shopping for only has a 10 gallon, I wouldn't consider this. It's, it, tanks fill up fast for, you know, for, you know, a 10 gallon tank, it's really not wise to walk away because you'll be back in five minutes, if that. Um, but for these 55s, it's very helpful. For these 100s and uh, in 20s, it's even helpful. I use this on 20s and up. Uh, 10 gallons, it's kind of not worth my time to walk away uh, because I'll be back fairly fast. So very, very useful item. And this was under $10 on Amazon and I will have a link to it. All right, so that's basically everything that I could think of um, that's a little bit different. Now, there's definitely more out there. This is all I could come up with. There are more foods that you can get. You can get freeze-dried or you could get frozen. Uh, maybe not frozen. Mm, yeah, I would, I would stick to... You gotta be careful with foods because 
people, when they feed their tanks, they're particular on what they feed. Um, so you need to be careful with foods. That's, I just wanna, I wanna emphasize, be careful on what you give someone to feed because people can be very particular on what they feed. Um, but there are good videos out there to help you guide, you know, which rapashi to get. And I really do think this is a good food for everybody. Um, and it would be hard to go wrong on these. And these start at three ounces, half the size of this, for I think about $16, maybe maybe 10. They vary from, from you know, uh, um, flavor to flavor, as we'll call it. Um, but yeah. That's, that's basically it. Um, if there's anything in here that you had a question about, leave it in the comments below. Uh, there are countless videos on YouTube on, on how to make these guys. Um, test strips. I'll have a link in the description for this. I'll link this as well. And I will link these as well. So anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, happy holidays.